everyone. Welcome to my science journey. We are glad to have you here. Today we are honored to be hosting Francis, uh, who is the head of department for human health at Mount Kenya University. Of course, Mount Kenya is in Kenya. And he'll be speaking to us about his career and his journey, the lessons he's learned. Thank you so much, Francis, for honoring our invite. We are glad to have you here. I'm sure there is a few people that are interested in working with you uh, at MKU and also in Kenya. Uh, so uh, hopefully from here, they can get to reach out to you either directly or indirectly. Just my starting point is that your work focuses deeply on cancer research and public health. What is your motivation for, you know, cancer research, especially in the Kenyan population? Yeah, uh, thank you, Rod. Uh, again, my road to SARS is, if I can just go back a little bit, mm. if I come to cancer, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say that my journey to SARS is quite winding. It's winding mm -hmm. because unlike most people who clear their undergraduate, go for master's or go straight for PhD. I took a long break, 14 years, taught okay. in all high, you know, high schools and taught in colleges. Wow. Went for master's and took a, uh, after master's, it took me a few more years, like six years before I got my PhD. So wow. yeah, it was long and winding and so from, my master's and PhD, I worked on malaria, uh, worked on drug resistance in Camry, uh, 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 looking at the markers, genetic markers for chloroquine mm. resistance, yeah. PFS, PFCRT, uh, MDR1, and uh, uh, then my PhD was uh, still on malaria. I wanted to do my PhD on cancer, yeah, you know, cancer genomics, just yeah. this nudge for cancer. And yeah. then uh, uh, when uh, I didn't get a, a, a mentor at that particular yeah. time, I went yeah. back to malaria because it was the available thing. But mm -hmm. at the back of my mind, I knew where my where, my, where I was traveling to. So I wanted to acquire all these skills, put them together, and then uh, launch into uh, what I wanted to do, cancer, cancer yeah. research. And so I also yeah. had to do some course on implementation science at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I, I also work in population sciences, the cancer registry and all that. So, why cancer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is the why question cancer, you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, why cancer? What drove me to cancer? It's very yeah. personal. I lost quite a number of relatives to cancer. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first degree, you know, relatives to cancer. And uh, uh, when my maternal uncle was dying of leukemia, yeah. I, I, you know, I felt so useless. You have the knowledge, you feel this, that helplessness that you have. Yeah. And then you tell yourself, okay, I got to, to, to do something whichever way. Yeah. Uh, I should do something uh, in one way or the other. So um, that has been, was my motivation. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah. to study because one is that, uh, so one of the motivations is mm -hmm. my very close people, quite a few relatives that I know, yeah. uh, very first degree relatives that I know are dying of cancer, and my own dad also. So uh, when uh, I, I, that propelled me to, to, to move out of malaria to, uh, mm. to study cancer, to drive cancer, then also so, the other yeah. thing, the yeah. other thing is that uh, I've always had this question: Why yeah. is it that we always have poor outcomes than the Western population? Mm. The, the answer, the quick answer, would be uh, it's late diagnosis. But right. you, you, right. you right. the quick, that's the quick answer that you ask. Yeah. You, you'll yeah. get from any whatever. But deep down, you, when you go to the analysis. 
Uh, yeah. You get the person diagnosed at stage two, uh, stage three, in stage two in Africa mm -hmm. has higher chances of recurrence compared to other populations. Yeah. And you, you, you find now the question become why, what is happening in our population? Yeah. And I searched for studies. Believe mm -hmm. you me, in about 10 years ago, we mm -hmm. didn't have any studies reporting uh, gene expression, reporting uh, whole exome sequencing or anything on the, uh, from the African continent. So there was, we were to begin from a zero slate. And yeah. uh, also that, so, so you look at what is there, what therefore could mm -hmm. be driving the, uh, the, the cancer in our population. Yeah. And the other question is, are we really treating our patients? Cancer yeah. being so heterogeneous, mm -hmm. are we treating the putting them on the right treatment yeah. or are we just treating, uh, yeah. you know, it's a, a trial and error kind of treatment and yeah. not putting the patients on the right treatment. And number three yeah. then, mm -hmm. uh, without data from the African continent, from the Kenyan yeah. population, yeah. we, <laughs> there's no way uh, someone seated in, uh, uh, in Cambridge or Oxford, uh, trying to do in silico drug design, for example, yeah, yeah, and, and, and modify a drug and see where it can dock and on on a breast cancer patient mm. without yeah. data in uh, available, yeah, in our in the, in the uh, databases. So yeah, they'll just use the, what they have, but they'll mm -hmm. try to. If they want to do it for the Kenyan population, if you don't have that data out there, yeah. then even the designer has no raw material to yeah. modify the drug to suit yeah. the market. The yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, to suit the market in our population. So that that has been uh, my motivation yeah. uh, for, for doing what I do. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I'll talk yeah, there. Yeah. I, I, can, I can talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think, I think it's a lot of information that, uh, doc, uh, that you've shared. Uh, and I was just trying to break it down. And, uh, you know, you started from the point where you had a long career break. And I think a lot of people struggled with that and then moved towards your motivation towards cancer research. We'll come back to the long career break and speak about it later on. But because you are on the momentum for cancer, then let's speak about cancer. So you said your motivation were three things. And, you know, the initial one is personal experiences. And I mean, I'm sorry for your loss and for that. But also this was like one of the driving factors. And also you're trying to understand, you know, why do we necessarily just have two outcomes in the Kenyan populations? And um, what are the genetic drivers that are, you know, are present in, in our population? And then trying to look at the other aspect, which is the data availability. You know, I, I think um, right now there's this whole uh, discussion about how do we increase, you know, uh, uh, data, uh, you know, in the context of the Kenyan and African population uh, to extend. So can you speak to us about what you are doing in your, you know, your research to address this sort of like, uh, aspects that you've uh, pinpointed. So, so, for instance, can we start uh, with the genetic drivers? What do you think are the genetic drivers for cancer, particularly in, in the Kenyan population that you've been working with? That's a big question. I wish I had an answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is what yeah. we are looking for. Okay. Uh, I'll look at breast cancer. Okay. Uh, what we, uh, without what we have done is we've uh, done uh, a study on using whole exome sequencing. Uh, we, we are hoping to do a uh, whole genome sequencing in the near future. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this was also the first study uh, mm -hmm. in the region to, to mm -hmm. report kind of uh, some, a snapshot of what's happening at the genetic level. 
Yeah. Now, uh, we found that uh, one of the things, the key things among the many that we have found yeah. is uh, we, we found uh, a gene, the, the RN1A gene, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, 80 rich. Yeah. Uh, an 80 rich area. Uh, this is a gene that uh, uh, is involved in uh, no regulates cell division at some point, mm -hmm. but uh, the mutations are mm -hmm. associated to uh, poor outcomes yeah. uh, in hormone receptor positive, that's estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it is thought that estrogen receptor negative breast cancer is more aggressive, which is true, yeah. Yeah. and more difficult to treat. Yeah. Uh, but in the Kenyan population or in the, on the African continent, yeah. where uh, 85%, almost 85% will be hormone receptor positive. Yeah. Naturally, you expect better outcomes, mm -hmm. but uh, you still find that we, we still don't have the optimal outcomes when it comes to treatment of cancer. So okay. one yeah. of the, the things uh, that we, mm -hmm. we, we found was the a signature in this gene that uh, modulates response to uh, endocrine treatments or uh, treatments that are targeting hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is what we are seeing, like almost 85% of our patients. Yeah. Uh, then the question becomes, are we... Uh, what is happening? Are we treating well? Yeah. Uh, at uh, in you know, so we have we cannot say I'm not uh, without causing any alarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah without yeah. causing any alarm, I'm not yeah. saying that our population is prone to resist. <laughs> you know, okay. uh, because we have not validated that. We are just yeah. moving actually. Uh, yeah. This week, this week is yeah. when we received approval to do yeah. a validation study on 300 patients. Okay. So, okay. Uh, at whom we have data, you know, uh, mm. their clinical data and outcome yeah. data, five year survival. So we want mm. to do to look at samples from a cohort mm. of 500 patients, uh, 300 patients, just yeah. to see what is the pattern. What is mm -hmm. the rate of mutations in this particular gene? What's the mm -hmm. prevalence? And then uh, how is there a correlation with the outcome? But that yeah. was an, uh, an alarm for us. Um, mm. Apart from that, we also observed a heavier mutational burden uh, okay. in, in, in the Kenyan patients. We are comparing with the, uh, the, 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 the African Americans and yeah. the European American population. So mm -hmm. our Kenyan patients, which was expected, just like mm -hmm. same was reported in the Nigerian study, yeah. uh, where they had uh, also a heavier mutational burden. Uh, yeah. But mm -hmm. we don't see the same recombination pattern as it is in West Africa. Uh, okay. In the Nigerian study, yeah, we didn't report. Uh, the same recom similar recombination pattern. Uh, is this is this attributed to like the genetic diversity or why is why is there a difference? Yes, yes, yes. If you do uh, if you do uh, 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 ancestral whatever, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, uh, you find and the admixture, the genetic admixture. When you yeah. you do you map. The yeah. Kenyan patients are mapped closer to the European uh, population okay. than the African, the West African population. So there's there's mm -hmm. something about the Kenyan patient, the Kenyan population. We yeah. are also uh, looking at the expression pattern 
And yeah. I have a group of uh, uh, a postdoc and some few other students yeah. just for fun, doing something for fun and to <laughs> keep us <laughs> busy. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, so does what this did, mean that? Yeah. What we did, yeah, what we did is we, we took an yeah. uh, RNA, RNA yeah. sick data from the Kenyan yeah. population and from the uh, Ghanaian, uh, Nigerian, and Ethiopian mm -hmm. population. That's what okay. we could find free. And yeah. then uh, Ed wanted to do a Pan-African uh, paper kind of yeah. analysis, but we didn't, we haven't got data from all uh, countries. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what we are saying is, <laughs> the expression pattern of kenyans is this way okay and the other africans are this way so uh so the other africans meaning nigerians ghanaians Nigeria, and Nigeria, Ga nigerians and ghanaians are share quite a lot okay Ethiopians share more with the the the, 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 the 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 expression pattern in Ethiopia is closer to the west african to the, mm. than their neighbors. That's interesting. That's interesting. It, like 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 uh, we we are still it's work it's still work in progress. Work in progress, yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 it, to me it's uh, yeah it's, it's looking it's just quite interesting. It raises a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Prof. And uh, so I just wanna shift the conversation a bit, and you know, uh, before picking questions from the audience. Uh, if you have a question for Prof, please uh, type in the chat box and also let us know where you're joining us from, because that is that would be helpful for us. So type in the chat box where you're joining us from and if you have any questions. Uh, but Prof, you know, you've spoken about, um, you know, what what your team is doing. And, you know, uh, I think you've also highlighted the challenge in terms of data, um, you know. So is there anything that you guys are currently working on uh, in terms of like uh, addressing the challenge of data or accessing data uh, with your team? And what other sort of like challenges are you facing with, uh, with this kind of research in, in the continent? Uh... Let me go back slightly. That yeah. when we started this work uh, a few years ago, I think we had already started. And uh, yeah. a few years ago, I had a discussion with one of my great mentors, and he's become my mentor collaborator yeah. from NCI. Yeah. And he was so convinced that there was no need to to do an African specific study. Okay. Like we know we have data from the African Americans that are people of African ancestry. Yeah. And and then when uh, the Nigerian study came out yeah. on breast cancer, then yeah, then they, I mean that helped to change the perspective a bit of the world. Mm -hmm. But then there was mm -hmm. also now the question, oh now we have data from Africa. Mm. And uh, you, you, you are telling them, look, uh, Lagos and Nairobi are very far, you know, yeah, apart. So uh, maybe it's people easily from Lagos would easily cross the Atlantic than cross the equatorial forest mm. to, the, to the Eastern Africa session. Yeah. So that was one of the challenges people understand the science world let me put it mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. a need for to invest in understanding yeah. the african uh, population yeah it's, it's taken long it's taken a while yeah just until very much recently like four years ago that yeah. there was there's been a lot of interest now mm -hmm. when it came that it became clear that the african uh, people of African ancestry yeah. uh, in the diaspora mm -hmm. may not be representative of the African on the continent. Yeah. And uh, with the paper that came out that genotypes uh, various races, different races, 
yeah. uh, people from different races, whole genome sequencing, then reported yeah. more than 5 million SNPs that had not been reported mm. anywhere else. Mm. Then that yeah. has helped to switch uh, the interest, to, 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 yeah. to, to switch the interest. So uh, at the beginning was to convince the science world that yeah. there's needs to do uh, to understand the genetic pattern of mm -hmm. diseases in the African from the Africans themselves. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, yes, from the African themselves. And uh, with also the growing uh, understanding of epigenetics, yeah. uh, the role of epigenetic changes in disease yeah. and in, 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 in heredity in general, uh, this is helping to open up the world. So one of the, the, the challenges here has been, uh, for me, is that you are leading yourself, you know, uh, mm. uh, you, you don't have, uh, locally, you don't have someone who has walked the path, and they don't, yeah. they have not tested the fire. Yeah. So uh, you are testing the fire, sometimes it, pan, it burns and mm -hmm. burns very mm -hmm. hard. So yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's very hot, and uh, you are. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I now mean, there are a few people coming yeah. in, coming yeah. in, but uh, uh, initially it was hard. Uh, mm. I, I remember even I had to sit with a, uh, on an ARB. I had to go there in person and held mm. a one-hour session, like. As if I was defending my thesis, you know, I felt like mm. I was <laughs> uh, defending my thesis to make them understand why I need to, we need to do a genetic yeah. study. Uh, yeah. Because uh, by then, many people thought, oh, genetic study, so you want to clone? Or what do you yeah. want, what exactly do you want to do? Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, that's one of the challenges. Number two okay. is that we, we don't have uh, models, uh, you know, we don't have uh, cell lines, uh, we, we don't have, uh, we have not done any, uh, any, any models that are suitable yeah. to study cancer in Africa, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Kenya, Kenya in particular. So yeah. whether you want to do, no one is doing organoids, no one is doing explants, yeah. and so uh, it becomes a challenge uh, in yeah. one way or the other, because mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can we can do uh, studies on cell lines. Yeah, uh, I, I know that people who study like uh, drug discovery studies or herbal uh, herbal extracts to see the efficacy of the cancer, they have yeah. to import cell lines, you know, developed mm -hmm. in Europe, or in the U.S. or in Asia, but yeah. not from Kenya. From, uh, not from the African population. So yeah. what the findings you, you get, are they reflective of, uh, of, the, yeah. of the population? I mean, taking, assuming that the, there's, there's no change in the Petri dish, you know, the Petri dish evol evolution of the cell lines, yeah. assuming it's constant, even if yeah. you, you assume there was minimal change, but then yeah. you're not, it's how will your results apply? to the African context. So that's also yeah. another big challenge that we need yeah. to address uh, if we have to generate information that is relevant to, to Kenya. You can uh, thirdly, uh, so that I get out of there, is uh, just epidemiological data. Yeah. Like, if you ask today a question, what is the pattern of cancer in Kenya? Can you mm -hmm. map which cancers are in which region of the country? Mm. So that you can ask environmental toxicology questions. Yeah. You can ask uh, questions that are other questions that are relevant to, to, to control in cancer control at the epidemiological yeah. level, uh, yeah. we still don't have sufficient data. Mm. You'll go, uh, they, people, they'll tell you, yes, we have a registry somewhere. We have a registry. Mm -hmm. Last week, mm -hmm. I was in 
in a facility which uh, are gone according to the uh, leadership of the of the ministry. They'll tell you they have a registry in that facility. Mm. When mm. you go to that facility, it was last updated four years ago. Wow. So, what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so there is. Uh, uh, we need uh, to, to some consistency in data collection. Yeah. And what yeah. I'm seeing is that uh, um, uh, because I have helped to set up registry, mm -hmm. it is much cheaper when academia are involved mm. in this work than when you leave it to be led by the ministry. Yeah, uh, because when you compare the costs that yeah. I used, it was a very yeah. minimal cost that yeah. I invested in uh, the two registries that we have set up. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to see how we can also support the other yeah. side, the, the, the third sites that uh, mm. may, may be having an issue to uh, just update their registry. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. That that yeah. That's that's good. so. In case you don't know, um, Francis has helped set up um uh, the cancer registries in Machakos and AIC Kijabe, and it's the ones that he's highlighted about. And I think this yeah will be better for you know uh planning and you know when we want data we can get the data if we can spread it across the entire country that would be great so we've talked a lot about the challenges and i think part of the solution is like setting up cancer registries uh, across you know the country uh but what would you what do you think are solutions that would work uh, for the Kenyan context, I know you've highlighted like the challenges that are currently, you know, happening. But is there anything that can be done, both by the um, the Kenyans plus other partners that would probably uh, be able to contribute? Uh, quite a lot, quite a lot. I'll say that um, where I am because of partnerships. Yeah. Uh, so quite a lot can be done, needs to be done mm -hmm. uh, by the Kenyans and even the partners. So uh, one thing is we need to invest in public education. Okay. Uh, when it comes to cancer. Yes. There's a lot, a lot of stigma, a lot of mm -hmm. beliefs around yeah. it. Uh, uh, and um, you, you go to some region yeah. when someone is diagnosed with cancer, yeah. uh, the, the family says, this is a dying person. Mm. So why should we spend money taking yeah. them to hospital? Yeah. yeah. Because they have maybe, they have had a relative who was diagnosed at a late stage and they died. Yeah. And so they assume that anyone who, who gets diagnosed with cancer, it's a death sentence. So public yeah. education to ensure that uh, yeah. you, I mean, we, we, we can be, we can, we, we encourage people to go for screening, to yeah. go for, uh, uh, to, to, and once screened, if they have need follow up, yeah. to adhere yeah. to the follow up schedule. Because yeah. again, because, uh, because of stigma and societal issues. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've come across a, across a case whereby uh, this lady is diagnosed yeah. uh, with cancer at stage two, breast cancer at stage two, has not spread anywhere. Yeah. They are put on a treatment schedule, but mm -hmm. they disappeared. Mm. And now, uh, when they came back a year and a half later, mm -hmm. the cancer had spread. So even the surgeon yeah. was yeah. so frustrated. Yeah. Like this yeah. case, we would have arrested it. Yeah. Now why are you even coming back? So yeah, uh, it becomes a very difficult situation to treat. Yeah. And you see now when the lady uh, uh, when the lady is propped, yeah, she feared losing her marriage. Oh, you know, she feared like she'll be 
sent out of the matrimonial home. And yeah. just, just because, uh, you know, uh, and, and so she could not reveal why she needs to go for surgery because the husband has to, is the owner of the money in quotes. So he yeah. has to decide to, to find how the finances are used. And so uh, that is a, a problem in its yeah. own. So a lot of public education, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, intensive screening programs. Yeah, uh, yeah. It needs to be done and then yeah. uh, investment in yeah. comprehensive treatment centers. Yeah, yeah. And, and I totally agree, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Doc, because especially, you know, for things like I know you, you uh, in your bio, you have the HPV vaccines, um, sort of like uptake and things like that. And a lot of these things can be arrested early on in time if we can, you know, uh, get public education uh, at the top of the list. So we are slowly running out of time, but in case you're interested in this area of research in terms of, you know, like um, uh, championing for, you know, public education in the area of like, uh, could be breast cancer, could be cervical cancer or any sort of like area of cancer research. The best person to speak to is Francis. He has helped set up cancer registries. He is championing uh, for the implementation of HPV vaccines program and cervical cancer screening across the country. Uh, and he's also doing research in this area uh, of, of, of cancer research, particularly breast cancer. So if you're someone that is interested in, you know, this kind of things, uh, feel free to reach out to him uh, and I'm sure he will respond to you. Um, because you're running out of time, I think we're just going to answer the two questions that are on the chat. Uh, we've answered the first one, which is on, on data. And the second one is, what is your proudest moment in this area of research? And yeah, let's answer that one first. What is your proudest moment? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> None. I, I, can't put, I can't put a finger on any. Okay. But I okay. think uh, uh, in my field of research is uh, uh, during COVID. Yeah. Uh, I mean, COVID is still with us, but when yeah. it was, when the transmission was intense and there were measures. Yeah. And yeah. in Kenya, people are not even going to, you know, elective procedures were suspended. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we, we, we did a study, an interventional study, uh, implementation study, which, or project, mm -hmm. which uh, yeah. was trying to get, assess patients from one who have been long, at home for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so, we got a few patients, yeah. including cancer patients, uh, that was in Machakos County, mm -hmm. who actually needed urgent admission. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also noted that there were, the home deaths were increasing mm -hmm. because you see, you're on long term medication yeah. and you cannot go to the hospital because. You, the, in fact, there was no mode of transport. And yeah. so uh, when we arrested some of the worsening yeah. situations, mm. cancer, diabetes, and uh, cardiovascular diseases, those were yeah. the three diseases of interest. Yeah. Uh, for me, when, you, we, when we followed now that those patients, some yeah. of them getting admitted, uh, immediately and getting interventions immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, up to a few of them still call me today because, yeah. and like the other studies, mm, this one is, is a project yeah. you have to interact yeah. sometimes with yeah. the patients. Yeah. So a few of them still call me today and say, mm. okay, you, you, whatever you did yeah. helped save our lives. For me, wow. that one single patient yeah. uh, is satisfying yeah. and I see it's worth to wake up yeah. and apply for the grant again after being, yeah. after being rejected, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> submit the Absolutely. grant again or, yeah. or go to the field again, or even without uh, support from any funder, go to the yeah. field again. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah, just that yeah. single life assisted. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the life we are talking about. So that is very, like, very massive. So as we are rounding up, uh, I would like for you to give your, us your final remarks. And maybe as you're giving us your final remarks, you could touch up on Alvin's question, which was on uh, cancer registries uh, and the data, the kind of data that they capture there. I think you've already answered the first bit of the question. So what kind of data is in the cancer registries? And then just round up with uh, final remarks. Uh, on on this sort of like conversation. Uh, thank you very much. What kind of data is captured in the cancer registry? A lot of data, demographics, sites of the where the cancer is, um, the, the 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 where you come from, risk factors uh, like smoking, drinking, parity yeah. if it's number of children if it is women uh marital status so basically social demographics uh, are captured yeah and also the type of cancer type of treatment that is given diagnosis yeah. that was given and when it was diagnosed and mm -hmm. outcome should be yeah. captured but sometimes uh we don't have time for me to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the journey yeah. of a cancer patient in Kenya is it's... too much, too windy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's zigzag, it's not a straight line. So mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's not possible to capture mm -hmm. outcome data because the patient started from facility A and mm -hmm. by the time they go to the facility number one and yeah. they are going for treatment maybe in six different facilities. Oh, no. So by the time you are capturing them, yeah. the data you you already lost that patient. So that's 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 the problem that we face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the kind of data that we have. Of course, we have gaps uh, here yeah. and there, but yeah. it's better we have some rudimentary data. We are yeah. very poor on outcome, so mm -hmm. we we don't know whether the patient is alive or dead. Mm -hmm. And mm. if they died, what is the real cause of death? You know, mm. it could be an accident. You cannot, yeah. call, you cannot you say, cannot they, say they died of the cancer. cancer yeah. 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 So uh, that that kind of data is lacking yeah. in our population. Yeah. yeah. So what is my final take? My final point. Thank you for having me, and it's a long journey. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 in cancer, and we. It's, it's, it's a, a field that needs a lot of investment in terms mm. of expertise, in terms of yeah. money and yeah. time and yeah. uh, facilities. And so for us to have also yeah. a better outcome, some of us are activists in a way, because <laughs> after, after you, yeah. you, you push patients to go and people, the population, you go get yeah. screened. Yeah. And if you have if you're in from kenya for example yeah and from nairobi you drive to you drive to embu drive to meru to isiolo mm -hmm. to marsabit to moyale to ethiopia the only radiotherapy machine is in nairobi wow <laughs> so when <laughs> you are at, at the ethiopia at the, at the kenya ethiopia border yeah you are referred for this the 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 Counties are trying to set up comprehensive, uh, I mean, cancer centers. Yeah. So they'll get an oncologist, they get a pathologist or a yeah. visiting oncologist. But yeah. after your chemotherapy, you need to do radio. Or sometimes mm -hmm. you need to do radio before you start chemo. Yeah. And you are in Moyale, but you have to go to Nairobi. Yeah. That's where you'll get the, the nearest, your, your nearest radiotherapy machine is in Nairobi. Yeah. That's about 400 kilometers away. So yeah. it becomes, uh, and you see, that's why people, I don't blame them when we have yeah. poor response to, yeah. to screening services, to uptake of screening services, because mm. yes, I, I go, I get screened. I am told I, I have cancer, then what? Mm. I cannot, I cannot, access treatment. I have never been in Nairobi getting mm. uh, bus fare from wherever I am to Nairobi is a problem mm. and stuff. So why are you bothering me? Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. 
Mm, so, mm, like, mm, mm. Makes uh, sense, yeah. That, 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 is, that is the frustration that is there mm. on, the, uh, on the ground, as they say it. So yeah. that's the kind of frustration that the population have. But uh, we keep chipping at yeah. it a day at a time, one yeah. thing at a time, and voicing, making our voices hard yeah. uh, in the right places Absolutely. to ensure that uh, we improve the uh, detection that detects cancer early, yeah. treat yeah. it promptly, and yeah. uh, expect better outcomes if we need good uh good outcomes detect early treat promptly and for yeah. sure we are going to win if that's what we can get thank you absolutely absolutely prof and i i cannot add anything to that i think you you've you know given us everything that we needed to know there is still a lot that needs to be done in this field but i think like you've mentioned there are a few steps here and there that are being made uh, which is good so for anyone i think prof me i'm going to just refer people to you anyone that is interested in working in this area as you can see that um uh, francis has a lot of experience uh, uh, around this and he also is motivated and passionate about this area of research i actually wanted to do cancer research at some point but i just shifted so maybe i might i might come back um but yeah anyways thank you so much uh, for sharing that we are going to take a quick group photo. So if you can please turn on your cameras so that I can take uh, a photo before you go. Uh, you can reach out to Prof on LinkedIn or Twitter. If you just search out his name, it will come, come up. And Prof, while you're waiting for people to turn on their cameras, I think the final question, because now we are switching to the postgraduate to speak about postgraduate studies. You mentioned you had a 14 year career break. <laughs> so, how you know i think a lot of people struggle if they've been out of school for like you know three years four years they're like mm -mm, i'm not doing this masters how like how how what motivated you to go back to school after 14 years yeah you remember the fun incident i shared at the beginning yeah yeah uh, uh that night i met several resolutions and one of it is that i'm walking home i don't have fees Mm. As a form two student, I'm walking yeah. home. Please switch on your photos in the meantime. I'll be capturing the pictures while Prof speaks so that we save on time. Uh, uh, I'm walking home. And yeah. as I walk home, uh, that night I made a resolution, two resolutions. One, yeah. to work hard and drive my own car, which I drove. Uh, at, a, at age 24, 25, yeah. and then uh, the other resolution was that I must earn a PhD. Okay. Yes, and I've not talked about that. So. All right, we are good. We yes. can switch off our cameras. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, like that was the that that resolution that I must earn a PhD uh, in my life, and not just any PhD but it has to be an area in biological sciences because I was yep. fascinated by biology. Yep. Uh, then uh, that was the resolution I made. So even when I took a long career break and I was trying to also make money, uh, it's still something at the back of my mind was telling me you are not home yet if i can mm, say that. Mm. keep walking don't get don't settle down don't settle mm. for this mm. yeah so in the process okay. i also turned down heading becoming a head teacher of a school <laughs> okay. and, uh, you know many many other things uh, yeah so, yeah i mean i love i love the resilience like 14 years. I, I don't think anyone has an excuse anymore. Like anyone that is here and is always like, mm, I'm tired of applying. I cannot apply. I've been applying three years, four years. You see, we have 14 years, but he, he now has an MSc. He has a PhD. He's doing like brilliant research in cancer research in the continent. So this is your cue. If this is you, this is your cue. This is your sign to not give up. 